Over the past week or so, the community of EVE Online players have been up in arms over a new event that's been happening in the massive space MMORPG. My name's Henry Cooper and I'm here with Mr. Gareth Evans. And we're going to talk all about how a lot of people are very mad, a lot of people are very happy. But certainly things have been shaken up, whether it's for the good or for the bad, we're here to discuss we're it. We're here to figure it out. So, if you don't know what EVE Online is, I'll give you a quick, very brief skim through. No, go from the start, Henry. Take your time. Well, in 2003. <laughs> we'll, we'll be here forever. <laughs> Essentially, reading about EVE Online is like trying to learn all of Star Wars and Lord of the Rings and Harry Potter all over again from the very start. It's like, there's so many unique terms, and that's cool. I like that there's the, all this lore around it. So it's a huge sci-fi space sim, and it's very well known for being community run. The developers, who go by CCP, they're, they're involved, but they're quite hands-off. They're trying to let it be organic, and there's internal politics, there's you know, big corporations who are constantly trying to kill each other, but sometimes not. Sometimes mm -hmm. they're working together. It's really interesting. Yeah, there's a whole huge, huge dynamics of huge corporations bat vying, battling for space and territory and power, and that all happens organically. Like n usually, there's no input whatsoever from the game devs. This whole kind of scenario just plays out, and it's one of the wonders of the gaming industry. Yeah. A lot of people hold even high regard because it's because of its ability to create these player-driven stories and we hear about the stories that happen in the world all the time yeah which is great because the devs they monitor all the technical side but anything that actually goes on in terms of peer-to-peer -peer content is completely player driven which is really cool and it's it's the big appeal of it. it's why a lot of players go to it and there's a big kind of anti other mmos like Ugh, you're from world of warcraft we're here on eve and we're better than you there's a lot of that in the forums and whatnot so there's this big new event which is essentially a massive invasion of NPCs called Drifters. Now, NPCs have existed in the game before, but most people don't really bother with them because it's mainly a PvP game. You interact with other players, build communities, and go to war with each other. But these new ones have been attacking dozens and dozens and dozens of space stations and ships and bases indiscriminately. It doesn't matter if you're, you're yeah. big or small. If you're a new player, little, you know, first timer, you're going to get blown up and they're still going to come for you whether or not you're, you're small or you're a giant corporation full of thousands of players. Yeah, so this has happened out of the blue. Like, there's yeah. no, there was absolutely no forewarning of this whatsoever and this is one event that's happened that the devs have been involved in and this this is shaking up the politics shaping up the power balance shaking up a lot of the universe in eve yeah and this is why it's kind of good and kind of bad people don't know people don't know how it's going to play out how yeah. long this is going to go on for how much damage is they're going to do there's just so much implications in this because it's a, it's a very finely balanced ecosystem in the world itself and the balance of power is sometimes fragile yeah and what what effect these npcs will have on all of that is yet to be seen yeah this definitely seems like the start of something something greater because the the invasion happened and the attack started coming and they sort of stopped for a bit and then they're, they're may be coming back again. Uh, CCP have announced a blackout for a certain area of the world, which I think is, is Nullsec, which yeah. is essentially the Wild West area. Like, you go there, you've got to make sure you're, you're ready, because it's risky. It's where all the dodgy stuff in yeah. the universe goes on. There's, there's no security bar. Yeah. So, I mean, if you PvP in a high security area, you'll get blasted by the security. Yeah. In Nullsec, it's, like you said, a Wild yeah. West. So, they're changing that to have no local chat, right? That's, yeah. that's the blackout, and people rely on that to know how many ships are in the local system which is handy for them if they're going to war if they're going to declare you know if if, yeah. if anything's happening in that system you need to know how many ships are there because shit might hit the fan with no local chat whatsoever which is going to be happening soon that information that people rely on so so readily it's not going to be there for them. So. Yeah, exactly. The way I've been thinking of it is Nullsec is like your Tatooine. It's just a massive, lawless area. And then High Sec's more like a Coruscant from Star Wars. You know, it's a bit more only a bit more civilized. I'm not going to go too far here. Yeah. This is a, an online game with a uh, toxic entitled gamers. But a lot of people are quite happy with this shift with all the uh, NPC hordes coming in and attacking their stuff. But most of the ones who are the most annoyed are the members of the big alliances. Because EVE is such a transparent game when it comes to whenever they do do stuff, they tell you. And they didn't tell anyone about this. Yeah. Well, they've got the most to lose, haven't they? The yes, most, ones exactly. with the most power have got the most to lose. So if this just does 
disrupt their power, then obviously they're a bit, you know, what's going on here? Whereas the people who don't have the power you know, aren't part of a big corporation and they see that, you know, the big corporations, the dominant corporations in the universe are now struggling against this new threat. We've seen people like postpone their wars, like go to yeah. ceasefires yeah. just to deal with this threat because they didn't know what the hell was going on. They're shaking things up like this, shaking the snow globe up, which has been so set in its ways and so kind of predictable for so long. It's a great thing for a lot of people and it's a bit of insecurity for the most powerful. PC Gamer reached out to some of the heads and higher ups of these alliances to get some of their thoughts on it. A guy called Dran from Test Alliance, and they're one of the really big ones, said, I wasted at least an hour going through all our gunner access lists to find a spy that didn't exist. So he thought it was an internal job, like it was a sabotage thing because we've seen that before of users going into collective money pools, grabbing everything and running away. And he carries on a bit. Don't get me wrong, the balls it would have taken to set this mechanic on the game intentionally, I applaud it. The game needs more snow globe shaking. So that, yeah, he's keen on the idea of jostling things about give bring something new. But then he gets a bit annoyed because it's a PvP centric game. So he goes on, if another player comes by and knocks down our sandcastle, that's one thing. Those risks are understood and part of the sandbox. We set up full well knowing the risks and are prepared to fight anyone for our right to be here. We didn't set anything up knowing that at any point with no warning, NPCs would materialize and blow everything up. NPCs don't sleep, they don't get tired, they don't have to wake up or take off work to show up for a timer. They just exist one second, shoot, then despawn. Eve is supposed to be a sandbox driven by human interaction and intrigue. This just feels contrived. And I think that's the sentiment that a lot of the higher ups are getting upset with is because it is this PvP based game. Bringing in this NPC PvE experience is kind of the opposite of what they play the game for. Yeah, and, and there's conflicting um, notions here. I mean, he says that the game needs needs more snow globe shaking that's his words and then he says oh but I, I don't want it this way. i don't like it how it's yeah. done in this way I, I guess i guess there's always a risk that if you want something to change that the change that you get in the end isn't to your taste isn't to your liking there so, has to be a compromise yeah another member of of test who is the fleet commander goes by seraph pedicane pedicane something like that the lack of forewarning that normally precludes an event like this took a lot of the player base by surprise and again that a lot of people People are kind of annoyed because if they had been warned, they could have set it up, set up defenses and stuff specifically for NPCs. And something like this, when I first started reading about it, sounds really cool because it's a big space game. You could put it in the lore, being like, oh, it's this crazy alien invasion out of nowhere. We don't expect them. We don't know what they're doing. And some people are keen on that idea, but the drifters have existed in the game before, so it's not like it's brand new anyway. And the lack of warning has upset people. Whereas I think if they gave out like hidden messages, like a, we've got a transmission from from the alien fleet. We'll work together and, and for a while. yeah, and figure out like there's a hidden code, and then we can find out where they're going to be and go bomb the hell out of them. Uh, a member of one of the the other big big alliances, Imperium, really isn't very happy because they had to pause their war that they're currently waging with another another alliance with thousands of players involved. So this guy's called Mitani. The Imperium was in the midst of prosecuting a war involving tens of thousands of real players. We are annoyed that we've had to stop our player versus player warfare and grind through what amounts to World of Warcraft style raid content. So that's again the kind of anti PVE mm -hmm. experience uh, sentiment rolling around there. But we have already broken down how the Drifter AI works and have successfully defended all of our structures thus far. I look forward to going back to real player versus player content, which is why I quit World of Warcraft for EVE in the first place. Obviously, the Mitani isn't happy. He's reducing what the devs have done here to uh, it's just PVE type content, and uh, that's why I quit World of Warcraft. But that undervalues the surprise factor. I mean, if the devs of it are capable of doing this at any point, then that adds so much more excitement into the game universe itself as part of the lore. Like, what are the devs going to do next? What, what event is going to happen next yeah. with no notice i mean that is what's exciting about this i mean as a as a third party bystander i can sympathize with this situation the other thing to consider too is these wars can cost a lot of money and like yeah. the currency in EVE Online is ISK. When you lose big capital ships or big space stations and stuff, the amount of damage done during a war is is quantified in like real world money. Yeah. Like there can be thousands of pounds worth of things just blown up during a war. So the, the other question for these big corporate um, leaders is like how how much real world money are they losing? I mean, I guess we shouldn't quantify like that, but you can buy yeah. ISK in game. It, the currency is there, and you know these people are losing real world value worth of stuff because of this NPC invasion so you can kind of sympathize with yeah, that yeah exactly there's this uh, redditor JL Peaks who shares that same kind of sentiment every 
time there is a huge PvP conflict, we get numbers of how many real world dollars were destroyed in the fight. I wonder how much money the devs wiped out with these NPC attacks and whether players are pissed about that. But the thing is, the drifter attacks altogether aren't actually that damaging. They came in very thick and fast and were a big shock, especially the big alliances and corporations and stuff. They can just withstand it. It's not really a, a dent in their infrastructure. It doesn't really damage them too much. And when it comes to destroying the citadels, which are some of the really big important structures, the way conflict with those works is you have to hit it three times, three separate occasions, because the idea is that each team then can recuperate and kind of regather some resources and There's ships Like and a cooldown. Yeah, it? essentially, it's a cooldown. Uh, when the drifters attack, they only hit it once and then don't come back. So it's not really doing it properly. So it's not really yeah. a threat. People are just saying it's more of a more of an inconvenience than anything. This goes yeah. back to what um, Milani's saying about it just being a grind. It's not an actual challenge. Yeah. As far as I'm aware, when I was researching this, the attacks have more or less stopped so this seems to be ahead of something more coming so this will probably evolve further with maybe more npc attacks or more information especially with the new blackout thing which is meant to be happening imminently and one thing as well about the uh communications blackout is that imperium who we mentioned earlier and the fraternity i think they're the biggest chinese based alliance they're you not coming together in quite unprecedented fashion to cripple eve's overall infrastructure and economy because they've essentially come together put together all their all of their resources and establish kind of like their own mini trade union type thing in the hope of just smashing the main economy within high sec, the uh, high security section, which is maintained and run properly so that they can damage the overall games like systems and the way it runs in protest. Yes, yeah, they're revolting essentially. Yeah. They're, prote a, they're protesting what's coup. happening and they're, and they're attempting to destroy the economy by, by, by what, getting together and making yeah. making their own version of it. I mean, I mean good, good luck to them. I mean, hopefully this kind of thing can work. I mean, that's that's what they want from me. Exactly. Like the power in the in the players' hands. Part of me is like, oh, you're, you're smashing the game up because you're not getting your way. Oh, boo-hoo, <laughs> let other people have fun. But the other part of me is like, this is exactly what EVE is. Yeah. It's about this sort of shit. Yeah. About people doing things together their own way. So there's a Redditor called Wingspant who's quite a pro uh, prominent EVE user and commenter. He's always posting about news and stuff. And he sums up where people align on this big NPC invasion really quite concisely. Basically, it goes like this. Part of Nullsec Alliance blob, and it's crossed out, blocks. Salty. Part of any PvP hunting whaling group, hard. Part of any high sec care bear club, popcorn. So there's everyone over in high sec, they're just chilling out, like, oh, ev th this problem doesn't affect us at all because we've got the security to just defend us. Uh, players are also threatening to completely cancel their subscriptions because of the blackout thing, which I think is a bit melodramatic because you don't know the wider plan. I think it's a bit premature, maybe not melodramatic, I think yeah. it's premature. Yeah, I mean, like you said, if this is just the first step in like a bigger invasion or a bigger event that's happening, if, you because know, these NPCs now have, have kind of quietened down. They, they, they are they have told us about this blackout thing that's going to happen, and they're going to give the players 48 hours warning of that. Does that coincide with another huge invasion? I mean, the, is this just the start of something bigger? That's the question now. I mean, I mean, how how is going to pan out? I mean, I can understand people not liking this because <laughs> and and threatening to leave. I mean, that's the only power that they've got left. If the power have been taken away from them, the power that they've been gaining for so you know taking. So so long to, to amass has been taken away from them randomly they, they feel because of intervention from the devs then the only power they've got left is to hurt the devs which is leave the game and I can understand that rationale yeah absolutely I think the general sentiment of let's say the more casual players and I, but I don't really think there is such a thing as a casual EVE player no that's a contradiction in yeah terms, exactly but, I mean, the, the most casual of EVE player is still yeah. very committed someone who's not the top tier of every alliance you know <laughs> yeah. it doesn't spend every week minute on the game. <laughs> they don't seem too enraged. Uh, the general sentiment seems to be, oh, this is a good jostle. It's a shake-up, as we keep saying. It's just shaking the snow globe. A guy called Mikods said on Reddit, players were too comfortable. It's a good thing to give them a kick in the balls once in a time. And most likely there was a quest line that warned about it and players just ignored it because it's not high-end PvP. Well, fuck you, Care Bears. No more sleeping on comfortable piles of money. So he's saying everyone's getting complacent in their big old alliances where they can just yeah. hide and hoard resources. Well, 
Well, that's the thing. If if people do quit on mass, if the big corporations uh, do throw the teddy out the pram, there'll be a void of power and people will just fill it. Like, yeah. I mean, this is the type of game where it, it won't stay the same for a long while anyway. So, yeah, like he says, uh, no more sleeping on comfortable piles of money. you got to earn your cash now. Yeah, so there was a bit of a sentiment of some people worried that uh, the devs are trying to, like, soft reset the whole game for some reason. Like, just wipe it and destroy everything they've built over the past, what is it, 17 years, I think. The, this Reddit user, Lord Supreme, come in and said, Shaking up the box isn't a reset. Players just got too comfortable and Eve needs to stay current and evolve. And that's exactly what I think. I don't think this is much, it's a reset. I think this is them trying to give people yeah. a shot in the arm. Yeah, it would be too risky for them. Obviously, Eve Online is a game which has been operating for like 16, 17 years, however long now. It's something that the devs can rely on in terms of they've got an established player base, they've got a recurring subscription, they've got an income stream every month, they've got the event, I can't remember what it's called, the Eve convention that they got every year. There's a certain amount of structure there and to shake things up, to try and reset the whole game now doesn't make any sense from a business point of view, from a game point of view. Just make a um, sequel or do something else yeah. if you want to do that. It doesn't make sense that people are suggesting that's what's happening. So then I've got another guy here who was a bit upset, but even that's a bit strong. He seems to be kind of a bit jovial with it, and it's called uh, Mortis D.O.P.T. Drift is engaging player structures across all Nullsec. Drifter fleets engaging keep stars all across NS. Lol for you guys. It's your intent to commit business suicide? So that's again, like, if they're wiping the slate, like, why would they ever do that? Hoping to receive some kind of big post from you guys just apologizing that was a bug because changing NPC mechanics without any previous information is kind of wrong. Full of surprises CCP like always. But my favorite Reddit thing all about this sums up the positives and negatives on both sides and there's a few there's a few more negatives than there are positives. This comes from Radioactive and they're cool because they've spelled all of the vowels with numbers. Positives. New stuff. Finally, NPCs in Nullsec that aren't dumb enough to eat shit to drones 24-7 without working out that they can actually shoot drones. Forced some people to finally fit their structures properly, lol. Gave people much needed opportunity to finally get good with those Citadel Air of Effect modules. I managed to hit them with a warp disruption bubble. I'm very proud. Citadel bomb manufacturers are rolling in ISK right now. And then the negatives. These drifters aren't actually that interesting to fight. Wait for them to land on the structure. Nuke them with Citadel guns. Rinse. Repeat. Constant attention required. Being AIs, they don't chill. You're basically on alert 24-7. That 30 minute break you take to get Taco Bell in your groups off TZ will probably result in another Anthenor being reinforced. They don't actually get rid of Citadel spam, just create timers then bugger off. Only kill Citadels by accident if they happen to land on a final slash anchor timer. Drifter AI is buggy as hell. Sometimes they just end up warping 500 kilometers off a structure and sitting there until killed, not even responding to aggression. Sometimes they warp around on grids wildly like the devil is cloaked and chasing them. At this point they seem to be a minor nuisance rather than accomplishing anything. I'm looking forward to seeing what CCP's endgame is here. If this is all this is, I'll be very disappointed. So again, I reckon once they come out and finalize whatever move they're playing here, we'll really be able to tell kind of the reception and whether or not it has been good for the player base yeah. or it's just messing them up. Like if it if it's a fuck you to your best players. Yeah, whether it's good or not for the player base, this is definitely good for CCP because people are talking about we're to, uh, yeah. uh, mugs like us are talking exactly. about Exactly. We know nothing about Eve Online. Out outlets are covering the story and it gets more exposure for the game and more people will trickle in and start playing the game as a result. That can't be a bad thing for CCP and unless the amount of people leaving um, outweighs the amount of people coming, but I, I, I'm yep. not sure. I'm not sure that'll happen. But EVE Online always gets its headlines for its intriguing stories and probably CCP have seen that they get a boost every time a big story happens or a big coup happens or some spy or other gets found out or whatever. They've manufactured this themselves. They'll probably see a result of players coming into the game yep. as a result so I don't know if you want to be as cynical as that about it maybe that's the reason that they've done it and they're just seeing how it pans out and they're just trying to gauge whether it's a good thing to press on or to just back off yeah their choice to say nothing is obviously very deliberate because because they've been so vocal before about any updates they're doing they've been uncharacteristically quiet and that's a, a clear deliberate choice and I definitely think something more to come so maybe we'll fill you in on this story when it evolves but for now I've been Henry this has been Gaz 
as we've been pretty good gaming. If you like what you see and you want to see more, maybe hit that subscribe button and the bell. Give us a like if you like what you see and a comment. Tell us whether you think this is a big F you from the devs or if it's a good shake up of the world and the status quo. If you want to support us making the content we create, go on over to patreon.com forward slash pretty good gaming and you can drop us a buck and you'll get early access to our podcast and our discord channel as well as a bunch of other great stuff. We'll see you next time. Bye for now.